Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Chris Kirby and today we're going to take some of the attention off the back because we got to move to the front. When we get this bad boy roaring, screaming, wanting to do donuts and burnouts and all the good stuff that we're going to be doing in it, we don't just want to rebuild the rear end. We got to move up to the front too. You don't want to do a full send on 25, 30 year old, I don't know what's going on up front with the tire rods and the ball joints and the steerings and, and all of those things. They're aged, they're old, they're beat. So we're going to get all of that taken apart. We're going to get it out of the way. We're going to clean some stuff up and get some new parts ordered. Hope you enjoy this week's episode. Let's go. As promised, old crusty rustiness. It's bad. And then this is the brakes. I drove this thing for a year and a half, two years on the daily, and I'm surprised that like it held up at the speeds that I went. So this is what we're getting ready to remove today. This is the stock brake setup that is on the truck. This is the beefier Civic Integra brake style. We got the stock front diff. We're gonna be pulling that out. Further tearing this truck down into many, many, many pieces to make it better in the future. We got the brakes off. Now we're gonna hit the axle nut with the Uggy Duggy Chuggy Chuggy and keep this party rolling. 60% of the time, works every time. We have successfully gotten the brakes, the suspension, the lower control arms. We got the differential out. We got the brace for that. We got it pretty much taken apart down there. We're going to go ahead and remove all the brake lines. After getting under there and taking a look around, I'm not surprised, but all of the coolant lines that run from the front of the back of the truck are removable. Mine are pretty rusty. I'm going to get those out. We're taking them to the shop, sandblast, and Cerakote those. Then we'll bring them back and reinstall them. But the rest of the day is going to be removing the brake lines, removing the coolant lines. We're going to go ahead and degrease and scrub all the underbody all the way back to the back. We're gonna go ahead and get it cleaned up. The idea is, is when we have everything apart, while we have everything apart, we're gonna go ahead and do the roll-on rhino liner underneath. It'll help us clean up any rust, anything that you have uh, you know, stuff we've seen that's just been neglected over the years. So we're gonna go ahead and get all the lines pulled out and move into cleaning for the next step. All right, so it appeared I didn't get all the coolant out. Got a little bit of that in my mouth. That was fun. Now the trick's gonna be to weasel this full length coolant line out from the entire truck. There's our crusty old coolant lines. They are finally out of the truck. They're extra crusty and nasty, but we will get these cleaned up. Here we are. Back on the floor again, or still. The last stuff we have to remove is we have the actual brake calipers. We have the rubber lines. We got the hard lines. We have the proportioning valve. We're gonna pull that out and we still have the rear lines are in the truck and we're gonna remove those as well. We have a last little bit of steering components left. We're gonna go ahead and pull those out. We just need to make sure that's all still in good shape. But after that, we're gonna leave the uh, e-brake cables and we have some throttle cable and all that jazz that we're still leaving in the truck we're not going to be removing that but that's what we have left to do for now i have the proportioning valve that was under the truck it has two independent lines for the front, but it only has one for the rear. That won't work with what we're doing because we're gonna be doing the uh, four wheel disc conversion. So if you're like, you trashed that thing and threw it away. I am gonna keep the proportioning valve for extra parts that I have for the rest of my stuff, but we're not gonna keep that in the truck. We're just gonna go ahead and go with a complete Civic setup, the portioning valve, the brakes, all that. We'll figure out a way to make that work. But instead of trying to come back after it's done and figure out why the brakes are squishy or why the brakes seem to be engaged in the rear all the time. We're just going to go ahead and put that in our extra parts pile and integrate the 92, 95 and up Civic brake system into this little truck. It's the most straightforward way to do it and that's what we're going to do. We have the underbody stripped down bare. The task right now is we're going to spray degreaser. We got our degreaser, we got scrubby brushes, we got lunch lady gloves, we got sudsy water, and we're just gonna get up underneath here and give it our all. I'm not gonna try to spend way too much time on this, but I do wanna get the underbody cleaned up. The more I get into this thing, just the more I wanna clean it up and freshen it up. The only actual problem with the rust that I've come into contact with is, obviously this is a decent sized hole right there, but up in here is where mud and dirt and grime collected. I went ahead and took the, uh, the mud guards off. So we will have to remove this little portion, put some uh, new metal there. We have this sweet little spot right here where you can see daylight through, but we'll get that cut out. We'll have a little patch there. So that's two spots that I've seen. I need to find the best way. Like I've watched videos on how to patch this and we're gonna have to do that because this is our windowsill. I'm gonna do my best to properly fix this. Martha says, hey. We'll work out all the surface rust and uh, get this thing cleaned up and ready for some, uh, some fresh underbody coating. Lunch lady gloves activate. So 
So that was just the nice, brief, quick degreasing and cleaning. It's a lot, lot better than it was. It just really had caked on mud everywhere. And the good news is, is my finger didn't poke through the body at one point. It doesn't seem to be completely rusted out. And you can see all the debris that fell out from underneath the truck just in the brief uh, scrubbing and degreasing. So I think it was worth it. We've cleaned the truck in general. I got it stripped down as far as I can for now. We went to the shop this morning and got our transmission. We have our K-Swap sitting here. It is very, very shittily hung on ratchet straps, but pretty much we're gonna get it made it back up to the transmission. We're gonna get it back up on the transmission stand roll it underneath the truck, get it mocked up back in place. We're not going to bolt it in right now. We are just going to be getting it close enough in place so we can start thinking about the rear suspension and mocking up around it. I want plenty of room all the way around the entire swap. If the new suspension can't clear a transmission stand and just it being an inch or two left, right, backwards or forwards, if it can't handle that, then I don't want it anyways. So we're gonna get it jacked up back in place in the back of the truck. We're gonna start on the four link. All right, so we have our notch in the rear axle tube housing now. You can see that it's cut to be able to move up and down and actually miss the transmission itself. So that's progress in the proper direction. This is gonna be the outer portion of our axle. This is the thread count. This is the CRV end. And then this is the K-series end that plugs in to the transmission. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna cut these all up see what's inside i mean i'd like to think most of you guys know what's inside there but we're really going to get in there because we only have collectively i measured about eight inches of actual shaft that's what she said <laughs> this is going to be tricky i haven't seen anyone else get into detail about this it's been doing little trucks so we're going to cut these up and uh, we're going to see what we can make work also you can see all the metal shavings in there i determined that this little crv axle won't seat from the back side all the way through the outer hub how we need it to. So that's gonna have to be bored out from the other side or this side, uh, hole punch straight through, or we're gonna have to modify the actual, it's sitting right here. There's a little lip on the inside of the factory axle tube that's making contact with that. So we have to work through that. And we also, beyond working through the axle tube, my concern is, I mean, that's it. That's the complete span of space that we have for an axle. And that's these big old hubs and everything. We're gonna start cutting some stuff up and see what kind of sense we can make of this situation. All right, so the stock acti tube, you can see that lip right there. I already cut it. That's what we're having to overcome, that inner lip. And, working at it we're getting there it's progress but yeah we have to punch that out through the center a little bit to be able to get the new axle through me and eddie and jonathan have been taking turns chewing it out with a carbide bit here and there for the last couple of days so we're making progress but it is very slow going we're getting there we'll make it happen This is day three of my guys sitting here just working away at the axle tube. I was gonna do this myself until I decided I didn't actually want to do this myself anymore. Thanks, Jonathan. Scared the shop dog. Run, Martha. Run, baby. Well, that's gonna do it for this week. Next episode, I promise is gonna be a banger. We're getting into the suspension. Maybe I've already made it. Maybe I haven't. Maybe I'm coming to you from the future and I already know how all this ends. You're going to have to tune in and find out. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Thanks.